This is Great Chefs of France, featuring some of the country's top artisans from Rouen to Lyon, from Paris to Cannes. Welcome to a culinary tour of some of the world's preeminent dining destinations. This time from Cannes, Christian Weiler. From Salou, Bernard Boisseau. And also from Cannes, Francis Chaveau. Overlooking the Bay of Cannes is the two-star Palme d'Or restaurant in the Hotel Martinez. The head chef is Christian Willa, a native of Alsace. He grew up around good food. His grandparents were wine producers and his parents ran a restaurant. His first course is lobster with a melange of vegetables. For this demonstration, Chef Willa will be assisted by Herb Dami, chef at La Palme d'Or. This dish provides graphic evidence of France's great store of natural product. It has more fertile land and temperate zones than any country in Europe. The langouste, or spiny lobster, is put into boiling salted water, flavored with a little red wine vinegar. The lobster is cooked for eight to 10 minutes in the boiling water. On laisse cuire la langouste environ 8 à 10 minutes. The dish also includes red and yellow cherry tomatoes, garlic, and olives from Nice. A seasoned mayonnaise is important to the dish. It contains a variety of fresh chopped herbs and saffron-infused lobster broth. Nous ajoutons le safran dilué dans un peu de cuisson de langouste. The mayonnaise is finished with a very expensive salt that is actually harvested from marshland called fleur de sel. Meanwhile, peeled and quartered artichokes are cooked in a little olive oil. Nous récupérons les gousses d'ail et les olives, des petites tomates, et toi là, avant ça, pour la cuire. The garlic cloves and olives, which have already been overheat, are added to the artichoke heart. Again, seasoned with fleur de sel and pepper. The artichokes, olives, and garlic cloves are covered. The lobster is cooked and removed from the heat to cool. The centerpiece of the presentation involves hollowing out vine-ripened tomatoes. Enlever la pulpe pour pouvoir les garnir. They are seasoned with salt and pepper, then filled with the seasoned mayonnaise. Two more seasonings are added to the mayonnaise ginger juice and a squeeze of lemon juice. Je pense que pour l'assaisonnement, nous allons rajouter un petit peu de jus de citron. Pour relever le goût.
La cuisson des artichauts se termine. Nous allons... Matchstick fresh vegetables are inserted into the mayonnaise. In some restaurants in France, it's not unusual to be served the salad course consisting simply of a basket of fresh vegetables. It's a sort of do-it-yourself salad course. C'est un plat typiquement méditerranéen. The chef says that this is a typical Mediterranean dish, but instead of the traditional cod, they use lobster. The filled tomato is topped with a half of a hard-boiled quail egg. The lobster tail is cooled and was shelled. It is split in half for presentation. It's deveined first. Half of the tail is used in this dish. A flurry of garnishes include curly lettuce and wild arugula and the quartered artichoke hearts, garlic cloves, and niçoise olives. Also the cooked cherry tomatoes. Boiled new potatoes are halved and added to the plate. Pommes de terre, coupé en deux. An olive oil and lemon juice dressing finishes the plate. After acquiring the famous La Cote d'Or, Bernard Boiseau renovated, including constructing a new kitchen. That kitchen has earned the energetic chef three Michelin stars. He published a cookbook in 1991 that won the Briat Savarine Prize. His entree is roast squab with cabbage served with foie gras. For this demonstration, we will revert to the direct translation of Marc Cosnard de Clazé. Here's the pigeon. It's a, it's a strangled one. It's strangled. We don't bleed it. We want to keep the blood in the pigeon to make the sauce. It has to be, it has to be strangled and not bled. We want all the blood inside. We make the sauce with all the blood of the pigeon when we press it. Here's the, here's the cabbage. Here we take the exterior. We take the uh, leaves off. You take them out. Here's a foie gras, fresh one. This thick, and it's fresh. It's very important that it be this thick. If it's, if it's too thin, it'll cook too fast. If it's this thick, then it will cook well on the outside, and the center will be very fresh and tender. Juniper berries, which we're going to put in the sauce. These are chopped up onions. And here's some lard, the pepper, salt, and butter. Okay, here he's removing the outer leaves. We take off the center, we cut off the center of each leaf. We take them off. We don't want it, we throw it out. We don't want to eat it. Okay, there, like this. 
Ensuite, on cuit. And we cook. Dans de l'eau salée bouillante. In boiling salted water. Les we cook the leaves whole. We want to press on it to put it at the bottom of the water. The cabbage is cooked for five minutes. So after five minutes, we want to drain the cabbage leaves in cold water. We drain it, plunge it into cold water, ice cold water. We keep the color. We want to make sure to keep the color of the cabbage. Throughout this demonstration, the chef was assisted by Patrick Bertrand. Now, to start with the pigeon, we put some goose fat, a little bit of goose fat. The pigeon's been seasoned on the inside, and you can see the liver, it stays inside. The liver has a lot of uh, blood, and it's going to make some sauce. Season with pepper. And here the pigeon, when we cook some meat before putting it in the oven, you always have to start braising it on an oven, on, on the top of the, on the stove top. We want to make sure it is all nicely colored on the outside before putting it in the oven to roast. Take some of the, um, the julienne, some of the cabbage leaves, and we set the other ones aside, which we're going to heat up in some butter. With onions and lardons, onions and, uh, and lard, which has been uh, already fried, which we add to the cabbage. We want these to all be crunchy. So we mix it well. Place it. With the salt. Now the pigeon is all nicely brown. We put it in the oven. For five minutes. 100 to 120 degrees centigrade for five minutes, the pigeons in the oven. Now we are going to stuff the cabbage. First, we put some uh, saran wrap. And there's the stuffing, which we wrap the other cabbage leaves around. And we close it all up with the saran wrap, and we tighten it very tightly. Here's the pigeon, which has been in there for five minutes. Not. So here the pigeon is out of the oven, but it's not cooked yet. It's not completely cooked. We ended up in five minutes. Now we're going to take off the thighs, the drumsticks and the fillets, in which we're going to finish later on this in the frying pan. And we'll do it on the skin side to make it crunchy. We we'll keep the casserole with the juices. The pigeon pieces go into a saucepan and are cooked some more on top of the stove. And then the skin always down. So when the pigeon is cooked, the skin will be very crunchy. So here's how we make the sauce. This is very important. We take the carcass, which inside has all the blood. We're going to put a little bit of water into it. Just a drop. 
use this pestle and crush up the whole carcass to get all the blood out. Wait, you didn't prepare any sauce? Did you prepare any sauce? Mm -hmm. There's the blood of the, of the squab. With a little bit, we added some juniper berries. And then we reduce it. Turning it, and we cook it for about five to seven minutes, so it thickens, the blood will thicken. The foie gras is browned just before presentation. There it is, the stuffed cabbage. It's green, it's beautiful, it's natural. We put the sauce, which is just, remember, just the blood and some juniper berries, and then we strain it. And there is the roast pigeon with the blood sauce. And we put a little bit of salt flour on top. Just a little bit. That gives it really crunchy. We love it. Mm. There you go. In Cannes, Francis Chaveau oversees the restaurant La Belle Otero, named for a notorious courtesan in the early 1900s. She once turned down $8,000 to spend the night with an explorer, who then promptly blew his brains out. She would have fit right in at today's film fest. Francis Chaveau's food does too. Here is gratin of grapefruit and figs. The chef begins with a base for an interesting rosemary ice cream two egg yolks and a combination of milk, cream, and rosemary honey. La crème florette. Ainsi que le miel de romarin. This will go over heat. Meanwhile, the egg yolks are beaten. The rosemary honey dissolves into the milk and cream, and the mixture is brought just up to the boiling point. Voilà. On arrive à l'ébullition. Je verse donc le mélange de lait de crème fleurette et de miel de marron-marin sur mes jaunes d'œufs. The yolks are tempered by slowly pouring the hot liquid. The mixture goes back into the pan and back onto heat. Travailler sur le feu jusqu'à à la limite de l'ébullition de la. It's stirred carefully and continuously, again avoiding boiling. Et obtenir un léger répaisseur. When the mixture is thick enough to coat the back of a spoon, it's taken off the heat. The base is strained, cooled, and then can be used in an ice cream maker. The almond cream that will go into the gratin starts with softened butter and powdered sugar. The mixture is thoroughly combined before the next element, almond powder, is added. The 
Then one egg is added. This would obviously be easier to do in an electric mixer. The chef will beat this mixture until it's smooth. Now the chef deals with the grapefruit and figs. The chef first removes the rind from the grapefruit, making sure that none of the bitter white pith is left. Then he removes the grapefruit segments, being careful not to include any of the membrane. The part of their peau qui les sépare. en prenant soin de ne pas les, les casser. The segments are drained. It's very important in this recipe that the grapefruit be as dry as possible because during cooking too much juice could adversely affect the almond cream. En quatre quartiers. Now some beautiful fresh figs are quartered. Whipped cream is folded into the almond mixture to finish. It's folded in delicately and slowly. He says just add a small amount of whipped cream to start with. The almond cream is spread on a serving plate and the dried grapefruit segments placed around the perimeter. Then the fig quarters are arranged in the middle. Quartier. The dish goes under a salamander or broiler until the almond cream is slightly brown. The last garnish is a scoop of the rosemary ice cream. To quote the chef, so after it's been browned in the salamander, the interesting thing about this dish is all the different flavors of Provence. Almonds, figs which we're going to highlight with the rosemary ice cream. Dessert tiède et glacé avec la glace au miel de romarin. Voilà, je dispose ensuite délicatement la crème glacée, le miel de romarin au centre de l'assiette. 